Good morning. I was totally prepared. Ah, but it is good to be here in worship with you, whether you're in person or joining us online. It is wonderful to be in worship with you this morning. Uh, just a few announcements. Uh, this morning after worship, please join us for some cake. We are celebrating many, many things. We are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, and we are celebrating the welcome of new members to the congregation today. So please be sure to join us downstairs for that celebration Outside. I lied. It's nice out. We're going outside for cake today. Join us outside for cake. Um, also, looking forward on the calendar, on September 8, um, your bulletin says that we will be downstairs. We decided to do a little shift um, for our God's Work, Our Hands Sunday. We will be upstairs, and we're going to make the logistics work. It's going to be just as beautifully chaotic and serving and life-giving as ever, but it will be upstairs um, for the whole service on September 8th, that is. And for our service project this year, we will be putting together the, uh, the toiletry bags that we take to Harvest Street Mission to offer the folks there. So join us on that day for that. Um, also, this week, we are holding in prayer, especially a couple of folks who have uh, experienced deaths in their families this week. Um, Janet Sanka's son, Kenny, passed away under the care of hospice earlier this week, and Gary and Anna Olszewski's uh, brother-in-law passed away, was that Friday, I think it was. Um, so we hold them and their families in our prayers, and I know, Janet, you wanted to say something. Thank you. Um, there are some other meetings and upcoming notes for things going on in the church in your bulletins, but does anyone else have anything else for the good of today's order? Seeing none then, I invite you to take a moment to quiet your hearts and minds for worship. Please stand as you are able for our gathering song.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Please pray with me. Jesus, you spread out your arms to welcome the world, and then you tell us to feed them. But we struggle with your command. We find the seed of doubt growing in our hearts. What is our compassion among so much pain? What is our small kindness in a system of injustice? What is one act of reconciliation in a divided society? How can so little food feed so many hungry mouths? We have simply forgotten. When you ask us to feed the world, you always provide the bread. Even when we have tasted the bread you multiply, even when we gather your leftovers, we still find ourselves between your wondrous power and our sinful reality. So we ask for your forgiveness. When you call for our faith, forgive our unbelief. As you prepare our heavenly dwelling, forgive our earthly worries. When you offer us armfuls of food that satisfies, forgive our appetite for unhealthy fare. When your gospel challenges us, forgive our irritable complaints. You are patient with us even when we prove fussy and doubtful, reluctant and argumentative. How often do we act this way just because we are hungry? People of God, Jesus knows you are hungry for forgiveness. So Jesus has set our table with bread from heaven and a feast to heal the soul. You are forgiven. God leavens you with eternal goodness. Jesus gives you forgiveness enough to share, and the Holy Spirit fills your life with the flavor of transformation. You are forgiven. Let us pray. Holy One, sometimes life feels chaotic and uncertain. It's hard to make sense of the things that happen to us. When we don't know where to find answers, when confusion sets us spinning, nudge us out of our spiral. Turn us back to you. Speak to us again with the words of eternal life. Repeat them gently until we understand. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Joshua. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Sheshem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now therefore revere the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. 
Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of the slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us all along the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and God's ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to erase the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from everyone. Evil will bring death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. O Lord, you redeem the life of your servants, and those who put their trust in you will not be punished. A reading from Ephesians. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. The word of the Lord. According to John, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? 
But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. Oops. Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and would our younger worshipers come on up. Good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> and how are we today? Good. How many of you have started school already? You got a snack. Awesome. That is a great idea. All of you did. Yes. And you started school too, right? Yeah? Oh, in two weeks. Okay, soon. Well, you can listen to their wisdom and advice then. So, when you started school, you went into a specific room, right? Like you didn't just enter the building and you were like, I'm going to go wherever I want, right? Where did you go when you entered the building of school? Your home room, right? Or your classroom? Where'd you go when you walked into school? Oh, okay, in a bus room. So when you walked in, how did you know which room to go into? How did you know? Oh, you got a tour of the building. And there's a sign. Nice. How else did other folks know which room to walk into? How did you know which room to walk into? Someone told you. Excellent. How did you know? Because you could read the, I'm assuming there were signs, right? Yeah, it wasn't just written in the air. It's like, right. There was like a piece of paper, yeah. Where, how did you know? Oh, because it was close to something else that you knew. Excellent. So oftentimes when we go to new places, we need a little help finding it, right? We're going old school. Does anyone recognize this? What is It's a map, yes. Back in my day, pause while I stroke my gray hairs. Back in my day, if we wanted to go someplace new, we didn't have fancy, fancy GPSs and phones that talked to us and told us where to go. We pulled out a map. And we would follow the map. And so this, I've got the church right here is actually marked. And so if I'm over here, I would say I'd follow this road and I'd go here. And then it gets a little, little there. So I might get a little lost. Uh, what do you think I might, get, might do if I get lost on the way? If, and I don't have a phone or GPS. Remember, this is old school. How else might I find my way if I lose my way in the map? Ask someone for directions. Excellent. Just like when we find a classroom, a new space, whether it's in the school buildings or using maps, we use tools to help us find our ways, right? Sometimes it's because we got a tour. Sometimes it's because someone told you where to go. Sometimes there's signs and we can read them. Sometimes it's because it's close to something we know and we can follow that path. But in our faith, we have paths that we follow too. We have journeys that we make, and we're trying to find our way through this faith, right? We're trying to figure out what it means to be followers of Jesus. How do you think we find help there? What are our maps? What are our signs? What are our tours that help us figure out what it means to be a follower of Jesus? What do you think? I'll give you a hint. One of them is this book right here. A Bible. Excellent. God's Word. Sometimes it's through 
people in the congregation, our teachers, or just people who in the congregation help us. Sometimes it's through experience, like at baptism, when we touch the waters or eat the bread at communion. Sometimes it's through friends, right? Inviting us and calling us to come check it out. These are all ways that we can figure out and try to figure out what it means to follow Jesus, what it means to be a Christian in this world. So when we're in town, we might use a map. When we're in school, we might use signs or tours or things like that. And we have similar kinds of tools when we're trying to figure out how to follow Jesus in this world. So what is one tool that you can use? This is a pop quiz. School has started. We are, we are deep in it. Pop quiz. What is one tool that you can use to help figure out how to follow Jesus? What do you think? Your heart? That's a good one. You can say things I've already said, too. What's another one? The Bible? What's another one? Friends? Yes. What's another one? Teachers? What's another one? Communion, right? Communion and baptism? Very good. All right, let's say a prayer. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for all the ways that you teach us how to live, how you teach us how to love. We give you thanks for all the help we have along the way. Your word, the communion bread and the baptismal waters, our friends, our teachers, our families, and the ways you place in our hearts. Help us to listen to your word now and always. In your most precious name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys can head on back. It is so hard to be little sometimes. Would you please pray with me? Good and gracious God, we pray that you open our hearts so that we don't just hear words with our ears, but hear in our hearts the message you have for this day. Amen. So you don't have to answer this question now. But why are you here? Maybe you're here because this is just what you do on a Sunday morning, or at least what you feel like you should be doing on a Sunday morning. Or maybe you're here to hear scripture, to pray, to participate in the table of grace. Maybe you're here because someone made you come. Maybe you're here because you're looking forward to seeing other people in the congregation. Maybe you're here to take a quiet moment before the beginning of a new work or school week. Why are you here? In today's gospel, the crowds had followed Jesus to the synagogue. This is the same crowd he had fed a feast to. The crowd where he took 5,000 plus people and fed them a feast made of five measly loaves and a few fishes. This crowd listened as he taught, and then they squirmed as he started to talk about eating his own self. So now Jesus looks at them and asks them, why are you here? And if you want to leave, there's the door. And as Jesus asked them this, a lot of them left. Almost all of them left. Because Jesus' teaching is hard. Faith is hard. The word of God is hard. And internalizing the word of God is even harder. To consume the body and blood of Christ means to be changed by it. It means turning the other cheek, loving our enemies, walking the extra mile. It means losing our lives in order to gain them, trusting that the first will be last and the last first. It means seeking first God's kingdom and righteousness. It means denying ourselves, 
It means the cross. It means widening the welcome and embracing the other. It means loving God, not just on Sunday mornings, but with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. It means not just tolerating our neighbors, but loving our neighbors as if they were our very selves. To consume the body and blood of Christ means knowing that there is life and resurrection even when we feel inundated by death and suffering. But this is hard to hear. Who can hear this teaching, this word? Who can accept and internalize all of who Jesus is and what he means? Who can truly live by the command that he gives us? Who wants to? The crowds had left, and Jesus looks at the twelve, and he asks them, Do you also wish to go away? Did they want to leave? I wonder if they thought about it. Peter, after all, doesn't enthusiastically proclaim that they were all in. You can almost hear him hesitate a little, wonder briefly about the alternatives. But how could they leave when they had tasted the goodness of what Jesus means? How could they leave when they know the power of Jesus' life-giving words? How could they leave when they had experienced and known the abundant grace of God in Jesus? They definitely did not understand how it all worked. They had so many unanswered questions but they knew that they wanted to keep walking with Jesus. They wanted to continue to be fed in mind, body, and soul by what Jesus offered. Jesus' teachings are hard, but they have eternal life in them. God had drawn the disciples to Christ, and they felt compelled to abide with him, to listen to him, to follow him. They couldn't leave now. They wanted this true bread of heaven now and always. To whom else would they go? To whom else could they go? Now we know that Peter will forget and stumble, and he will ultimately deny that he ever even knew Jesus. But the abundant, eternal, life-giving grace of God will continue to draw him in, to draw him to abide with Jesus over and over again, will pull him to come back and feast at the meal of Christ again and again. We know all too well that this journey is hard. The word of God is hard. The teaching of Jesus is hard. And the promises we make at our baptism and that we affirm when we affirm our baptism, are hard. And we often struggle with God's commands. As we say in our confession, we often get fussy and doubtful, reluctant and argumentative in the face of God's call in our lives. And then we hear that question, do you also wish to go away? And I must admit, sometimes, Yeah, yeah, I want to go away. I want a teaching that is easier, that doesn't stretch and challenge me, something that is less demanding of my entire self. But when I get fussy and doubtful, reluctant and argumentative, when we feel weary at even the idea of hearing and internalizing Jesus' teaching, how often is it because we are hangry, hungry for the bread of life. And we hear the words of eternal life that lie at the core of God's word, and we remember. We remember that taste of grace we have at this table. We remember the abundance of life offered in Christ. We remember when Jesus invited us to sit down and stay a while to eat and be nourished, to listen to Jesus' promise of good news. And we cannot forget how good that bread tastes. 
We cannot unhear the promise we have in these waters, in Jesus' body and blood. So how can I leave when I have tasted grace in the bread of life? When I have tasted the goodness of God? When I have consumed the words of eternal life in Christ? Like Peter, I know that I will forget and stumble, but I also know that the abundant, life-giving grace of God will continually draw me and all of us in and cause us to abide in Jesus' promise. Jesus' promise of mercy and forgiveness, of eternal and abundant life, offering us the bread of heaven now and forever. We don't have to understand. We just have to stay. We just have to abide and feast, taking God's incarnation so deeply into our own bodies and souls that we exude the flavor of Christ to the world. We are not called to follow Jesus alone, either. We are not asked to hear the teachings of Jesus alone. We are not required to make the journey of faith alone. We do it in community. And in that community, integral to that community, is Jesus Christ. God helps us and guides us along the journey. God is near to the brokenhearted and saves those whose spirits are crushed. God grants us the gift of faith, the promise of abundant eternal life in Christ. For whatever reason, you think you are here today. You are here because God has drawn you here, drawn you here to taste and see that the Lord is good, to be fed and nourished by the bread of life, to be drawn deeper into relationship with the incarnate word of God, to hear again and again the promise of eternal, abundant life we have, freed and forgiven in the name of Christ. God has brought us here to hear, to receive, to internalize the words of eternal life. To whom else can we go? You, Lord, have the words of eternal life. Amen. I invite you to please sit for the beginning here, and I invite the Sandorfs to come on up. 
we've got a couple downstairs, but they're still part of the congregation, I know, because I know they're watching online. Come on. <laughs> Don't be afraid. We now welcome these persons who wish to join with this body of Christ, the people of St. John Lutheran Church. It is my pleasure to introduce to you, oh, oh, <laughs> sneaking in, Casey and John and Kate and Nick is making his way up also. Okay, Casey and John as the grown-ups of the family, I ask you, is it your wish to make this community of faith the people with whom you will share your journey of faith? Is this the community with whom you wish to seek to make sense of your faith, the issues of your life, and who God calls you to be? Is this the community where you wish to continue listening to the story of God's salvation and the good news of Jesus Christ and being nourished at the table of new life? If so, respond, it is. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these people whom you have made your own by water and the word and baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. So I think you know me a little bit by now. So we're going to do some renouncing. Renouncing means we are saying, no thank you. And so we're renouncing like the devil and things like that. So when we renounce things like that, we don't just say, no thank you. We say it with our loud outside voices. So Kate, I'm leaning on you for this one. So I'm gonna ask a question, I'm gonna point at you and you're gonna say, we renounce them and your folks are gonna join in too, cool? Awesome, because they're going to renounce them too. So I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? <laughs> That's, that, I like that too. That's excellent. Nice. You can be bolder and stronger in your renouncement. I call this holy gusto. Gusto's like excitement. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? There you go. It's a big word. I got you. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper? to proclaim the good news of God and Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If so, respond, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Will you, who are witnessing these promises, share in the joys and sorrows and do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? Will you welcome these people into, their faith, into this faith family, embrace their gifts, their needs, and their dreams? Will you recognize that their presence and participation will change the shape of the body and help it grow in new ways? Will you support them in their journeys and assist them in their ministries? 
Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth. Cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Casey, John, Kate, and Nick the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Fun fact. This lovely family came at the invitation of one of our own members, a certain Lydia Miller. And so as the person who invited them to come and worship with us and be a part of this community, I invite her to be our representative from the congregation. Wait, wait, wait. It's set for tall people. Oh, sorry, folks. Sorry, people. Let us rejoice with our siblings in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Just hold on one second. So before you go back to your seats, I have a couple of gifts for you. Um, just a few years ago, we actually celebrated our 125th anniversary as a congregation. So here's an ornament for your tree. This is Luther's small catechism. We give it to our confirmation students, so you get a copy too. And last, but absolutely not least, we have the official changing of the name tags. So you may rip off your sticker name tag and receive this plastic encased name tag. Now, these are temporary, so we will want them back. But it is your duty and your responsibility to respect and treasure and cherish the name tag. When you enter the building, you will place the name tag proudly upon yourself. And before you leave, you will carefully place it back on the name tag holder. Should you lose the name tag, we'll give you another one. So, Nick, do you want your name tag? All right, Casey, that one's yours. Kate, that's yours. And John, that's yours. <laughs> that is sometimes the most safe place to put things, is, is in Dad's pocket. So we welcome you to the congregation, and we invite you to head back to your seats as we continue with our prayers. We'll clap again. Please stand as you're able for our prayers of the people. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, you have the words of eternal life. Lead the church to put its trust in Jesus, the living word. Direct preachers, teachers, writers, and all the baptized in faithful speech and bold witness. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Creator God, we and all creation are sustained by your word. We pray for all who remind us of our interconnectedness with all living things. Prosper the work of conservation organizations, ELCA advocacy, and local climate justice advocates. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of wisdom, as our nation navigates another election cycle, guide our leaders to act justly for the sake of the world. Bring about fruitful conversation among your people and bring, it about, bring about change where you see fit. Sustain all who serve on juries in their deliberations. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of restoration, bring healing and wholeness to all who cry to you. Where pain is sharp, bring a sense of comfort and relief. Where grief runs deep, bring your tender, tender mercy. Care for those on our hearts, especially Bob, Geneva, Cherry, Winnie, Henry, Harry, Ellen, Ruth, Sally, Katie, Debbie, Anne, 
those on our prayer list, and all whom we remember aloud or in our hearts, and all who suffer in any way. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of new life, protect students and teachers for a new school year. Bring an end to school shootings and cycles of violence. Move us to do all that is necessary to ensure a safe future for our children. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of every generation, we remember with thanksgiving all who have completed their baptismal journeys. Strengthen us in our baptismal callings to serve you faithfully until our journey's end. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God, and those on the hearts and minds of this congregation this day. Prayers for Eva, Ian as he grieves his grandfather's passing. Prayers for Karen facing diabetic issues. For the family of Gary Welsh, who died in a motorcycle accident. For the family of Kenny. May all be surrounded in your comforting grace. May all be filled with your strength and consolation. Receive these prayers and the prayers for which we do not yet have the words into your holy keeping. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share Christ's peace with one another.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God of all, mighty and merciful, heaven and earth are full of your glory. We thank you and praise you, for you have satisfied the hunger of your people in every age. From the beginning, you drew up food from the earth and humankind from the soil, filling our nostrils full of your breath. You ate the fatted calf with Abraham and Sarah and answered their deep longing for a child. You sustained your chosen people with manna as you led them toward the promised land. You sent prophets to answer the cry for bread and for justice, and in fullness of time, you sent your own Son, Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven, who in the night in which he was handed over, took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory to share with us the great and promised feast. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and stir in us a hunger for justice and thirst for compassion. Open wide your hand and satisfy our deep desire. Feed us with the bread that is you. All honor and glory to you, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Come. You take away the sin of the world Have mercy on us Lie, my God You take away the sin of the world Have mercy on us Lie, my God You take away the sin of the world 
stand as you're able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in grace. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. And may the blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Fed and nourished, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 